Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide here in 2022 for Slay the Spire. We are beginning Act 3, and we got a very popular Act 3 early hallway fight. Uh, the Act 3 hallway fights start getting to be diabolical, and they only get harder as they go. Uh, they Everything in Act 3 can be quite nasty, appropriately so, but hopefully your deck has scaled to make it more manageable. Now, we started here on this path, and we're in position to kind of uh, make some decisions about what we want to do, avoid some hallway fights, and remember we have the Juzu bracelet, so we can just take advantage of these events, knowing that we can't get fights, um, and kind of scoot through those to make better choices about which elites we want to fight, when do we want to go, uh, try to upgrade a card, and the like. But first, we got to get through this battle. So as it's been going with our Ironclad, uh, we go ahead and just begin all fights by doing offering, taking some damage, uh, and then hitting them. Now remember, we actually don't have a tremendous amount of AoE, and this is a fight where you want AoE. So these are Darklings, and there's three of them, and you can see they have a very similar pool of hit points, varying only slightly. Now they have this ability called Lifelink, which means if you haven't killed the other enemies, um, in two turns after you kill it, it will revive at 50% health. So you kind of have to take them all down around the same time, or they will keep spawning. Uh, and it's not necessarily completely impossible to do that, but they do attack you for a bunch and they start putting up armor. So we want to uh, make their life more difficult, if at all possible. So first of all, um, this guy's doing 10, this guy's doing 7, and this guy's doing 8. Now this guy has the least amount of hit points, so what I generally try to do is just burn one of them down if I can, unless I have a bunch of AoE, which I really don't. Um, now something tricky that I can do, if I want, is go ahead and, um, use Burning Pact to draw some cards and exhaust a card, that kind of stuff. Before I start spending a whole bunch of energy, I am going to just, uh, shrug it off, and I'm going to plan on blocking 17. And I'll Ghostly Armor. So now we have a full block. So now we can start thinking about other things. Now, if I play Berserk, uh, I'm going to get vulnerable like right away. Which means the 17 that I budgeted for is going to become significantly more than that. 50% more than that, indeed. So I could block that out, but I don't really think I need, you know, a bunch of extra energy for this fight. I think we can get through it. So I'm going to Burning Pact um, this basic defend and just say, okay, we do three damage to everybody and we draw. There we go. We got a body slam. That's kind of what we're looking for. I'm trying to cycle around and get this so we can definitely take somebody down. So this guy wants to do the most damage, so I'll just disarm him. It'll do three damage to everyone. And then we can Pommel Strike this character, okay? And we don't, unfortunately, have quite enough to kill this guy. Which is sad. Let me think about this. Um, none of these cards will exhaust at the end of the turn. So the question is, I will take five damage from this guy. If I don't kill him this turn. I can use a potion to make sure that I don't take the damage. Or... I could just take it. Now, the advantage of not killing this guy right now 
would be that I can kill him next turn, potentially, when I kill one of these other ones, and then put them on the same kind of timer. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the time what you want to do in this fight, if you don't have a good amount of AoE, is actually wear them down evenly. And I might have to do that, because I can't kill him. So let's spread some damage around. Now this guy hasn't been weakened, so I'd rather try to get him first, and I'll just end the turn. Oh, we only take two. My math is incredible. Uh, so great. I think I was still adding in, the, I was not calculating the fact that I had weakened the guy. Uh, so here we go. This is the kind of stuff that we would have liked to see potentially last turn, but uh, it's going to go just fine for us. So I'm going to uh, armaments this hand and then metallicize If I metallicize um, with my, I will fully block. Okay. And then I'll go ahead and just put some damage uh, into, this guy wants to block, so let's get him down there. And uh, what card do we want on top? I think Impervious sounds pretty good. And then I'll take three. So this is one of those fights where it's like, it would be helpful to have AoE. Now we of course do have this and this, we just didn't draw them when we needed them. So I think it's time to just, uh, now this is such a weird hand. Um, we drew only heavy stuff. I'm gonna do this. And I'm actually going to play this. Now, if I play this, I will take damage. Nah, I'm not. I've changed my mind. I won't. That's fine. Now we only have two to deal with. And we just need to get enough damage to work through this guy. So this guy has been killed. But you see, he's going to spend this turn regenerating, basically. So it's our time to put him away. All right. Um... I'm going to burning pact my uh, basic defend. Okay. And we will armaments plus bat that guy. Shrug it off will give us 15, and then we could do 15 to this guy, and we do 3. Ah, it doesn't quite work. It's very, very close, but it's tantalizingly close. You know what I'll do then? If I can't... Um, get this right. I'll just do this and kill this guy. This guy will come back, but this guy is going to die very soon. All we have to do is one Karen's Ashes and get him dead. He only comes back with 25 health, so we can do this. Alright. This is great. Alright. So, we're gonna win right here if we just um, one to shockwave exhaust damage there we go so we did lose two hit points but that's okay and we got a third potion which is a smoke bomb so this potion is great because it lets you escape from a non-boss fight you don't get rewards but if you come up to an elite or a fight that you realize you're just going to take a bunch of damage just use a smoke bomb and get out all right and in this situation i feel like I 
feel like I'm kind of happy to get another Body Slam Plus. I'll take it. That's enough of those, but those are great. All right. Um, oh, okay, so we found a Sensory Stone. Now, this is an event where we're going to get a colorless card or more. So we can get one colorless card of our choice, and we get to pick between three. Or we can add two for five hit points or three for ten hit points. Um, colorless cards can be very, very strong. And so I'm actually going to... Remember, I have my Eternal Feather. I have a lot of healing in play, the meal ticket. So I'm going to just do this and see. So what you get when you take two, we, lo we lose five damage. Um, we lose five health, rather. We take five damage. And we get to pick of three cards twice. So here, um, we can pick Bandage Up. And Bandage Up is insane, right? But Purity is also crazy with the ashes. So bandage up just lets us heal and then we exhaust it. Apotheosis is cool because it upgrades all your cards but we've got um, armaments plus so it's not as deadly for us. Uh, but a lot of people love this card. It's expensive, you know um, but it just upgrades your whole deck so if you get it early it's great. It's rather slow. Bandage up is like, we can use this every single fight that we draw it. It's zero, we heal four, and then we do three. So that's phenomenal. And purity, it's a little bit tricky. It exhausts itself and exhausts three cards, so we could exhaust four total cards with this, um, and then do 12 AoE damage. But we'd have to have a bunch of cards that we don't want. Now, there are, of course, fights where you get status cards, um, and I think I'm going to take this just for messing around. Um, and thinning our deck as we go doing damage. Now, our next choice is here. Um, and these are all pretty interesting. Again, I don't like Panic Button. We looked at this one before. Secret Weapon is going to be what I take here because it, it's going to let me pull out my Bludgeon or a Shield Slam or something that I need, and it exhausts. Good Instincts is just fine, but... Um, I'm going for that right now. So we got two very nice cards, and we're going to go to another event. Um, and <laughs> this is the secret portal. So we could take this and go immediately to the end of the act and fight the boss if we want. All right, so we could skip from here all the way up to the woke bloke, but we don't want to do that. I want to get some more opportunities to make our deck stronger. Um, I, I feel like we could probably take that boss, but why why do it? We don't need to. So instead, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to just not take it, all right? Now we have a choice. We can go fight a fight, or we can do a event. And I'm going to just keep taking events um, until I get to, like, maybe this junction here. Because I don't really want hallway fights at this moment. Um, and I'm looking to see if we can get lucky, get either a treasure chest uh, to, to pop off our Matryoshka. It will automatically pop off, but why not? And then we could also get a rest site where we could, you know, upgrade a card and... Um... Oh, no, you can't get a rest site, I'm sorry. But we could get a shop where we would get the meal ticket, is what I meant to say. All right, so here we go. And this is the madness, all right? So madness is like... Not that great. It It is a Winding Halls, and you can take two Madness cards that will reduce the cost of a random card in your hand to zero this combat. But here's the deal. With this event, the other options are terrible. Like, this is the worst. Like, you can heal for 21 if you're desperate, but you get cursed. Um, so you get this card in your deck, which mm, I don't really have anything that triggers off of this. I don't want this. Even if you don't want to take Madness, you lose 4 max HP, which is not the end of the world, but I'd rather not. But honestly, for us, I'm going to take this, and here's the reason why. Number one, the card exhausts, so we do damage with the ashes, which is good for us. But also, uh, if we could trigger it to make, like, Bludgeon or Impervious or Shockwave Plus, um, you know, or Bash or something, cost zero for the rest of combat, that would be amazing. Shockwave only gets to use once, but if we made, like, Bludgeon just free, I mean, that's beautiful. So we'll take it. We take 11 damage now, which, ouch, but we'll go here and see what we get. Okay. This is the Tomb of the Lord 
of Lord Red Mask, all right? We didn't get the event to get us the Red Mask before where you have to either you have to fight basically these three dudes. Um, so we don't have this t to trigger this. If you do, it's amazing, but we don't. And we could just pay all of our gold for a relic, but this is too much gold for me for a relic. I would only do this if I was right about to go to the boss and I didn't need gold anymore anyway, but I want my gold. I'm not going to spend it on that, so I'm just going to pass by. I like to think, like, 100 is okay for a relic, maybe even 150, but beyond that, it's just too expensive. Now, what do we want to do? Here's a shop here, here's a shop over here. I could go event, elite, event, treasure, shop, hallway, and then rest elite or if i'm dinged up we could go back this way uh but i think this is the i think i want to take this path over here and just take one more uh event and we finally got lucky and we got this so we got a potion belt and a regal pillow hilarious so we can't actually use the regal pillow because of our coffee dripper but unfortunately we got it we did get 48 gold which is great now the potion belt for us it gives you two extra potion slots, which you see up here. And it's amazing because we have the Entropic Brew. So, you know, we can use this to just fill everything up. And by the way, if you don't want to use a Smoke Bomb Potion um, to get rid of it, you can just right-click on it and discard it. And then drink your brew and fill up. The brew consumes itself, and you can just get five new potions. Um, all right, and let's go fight an Elite. Okay, so... The Act 3 Elites are diabolical. And sometimes I have decks where, like, I feel okay against a boss, but certain Elites, like the Giant Head uh, or the Reptomancer... Like, the Reptomancer would be really, really hard for us. We don't have that much AoE. Would be so hard that, like, maybe I don't even want to take Elite fights. And you can actually see, if we went this way, there would be paths where we could get to the boss without taking an Elite in this Act. And so you can sneak by and not fight one if you don't want to. I'm okay with fighting one. And we got the Nemesis, which is actually not a bad one for us. The Nemesis um, does a lot of damage and then goes intangible every other turn, which means every attack only does one damage to it. So you just have to kind of time things out against this character and you'll be okay. But remember also, we have our Smoke Bomb. So if things got completely out of hand we could just bail. So the first thing I want to do is just offer and see where we're at. Okay, we got a tremendously good first hand. Uh, so I think what I'll do I'm going to secret weapon and I'm going to pick an attack that I want Okay, then I want to get an attack that I can uh, upgrade, so it's going to be Bash. And then what I'm going to do is Armaments Plus, and then now Purity lets us exhaust five cards, which is bonkers. We're not going to do that, but it's funny. Um, Disarm is terrific against this stooge, so now he's a, he is doing, he went from doing 18 to 9. It's so good. It's just so brutal against this dude. And now we have four energy. I would, of course, love to bash and bludgeon, but we can't. Unless we would have come up with a madness, but we did not. I think what I'll do is shrug it off and then probably bludgeon. But if I would have drawn... Um, a madness, I would have... At least maybe gambled with it. Now... I could have purity to guarantee it. I'm trying to think of the best play. This is just 42 damage outright, which is most of the time just going to be our best play. I could duplicate it and do 84 damage to this guy's face if I wanted to, but I like to save my potions for as long as possible. And then if I have a bunch on the Act 3 boss, then more the better. All right. Um, 
Do I have anything good to headbutt back? Armaments plus, maybe. All right. So I could bash and then rampage and then headbutt my rampage, right? And then in that sense, um, we would just guarantee to draw this, but it doesn't do anything next turn against this guy anyway because he'll be intangible. So I think I'm just going to take the damage. Hit him really hard, and I'm going to purity this, this, and this. And he just is going to take uh, some damage from us, and we just end the turn. All right, so now he's intangible. You'll see it right here, which means he's going to take hardly any damage. But this is a very good turn for us to draw what we did. Um, I'm going to metallicize, get that in place, shockwave plus, get that in place, and we will ghostly armor just so we don't lose it, and body slayer. Remember, I just purited away some basic defense, so I don't want to have no defense cards, all right? So we go here, and, um, he is going to put a bunch of burn cards into our deck. Now, in that sense, if I would have been smart, I could have saved Purity to deal with those, but we do have Burning Pact, um, and so we can get rid of them that way, but burn cards are annoying, to say the least. We're going to go Burning Pact this, and we'll draw two. Okay, interesting. Uh... I almost don't even want a Madness, but I will just do it once. Alright, so our basic defend is now free. So we're going to Ghost... Mm, I could Madness my Ghostly Armor, which is not bad. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just get these out of the deck. And then we'll do this, and we'll do this. Now, he is not intangible this turn. Remember, it toggles. And so, we, because he is weakened and vulnerable, we can do 25 damage with our Shield Slam. And then he's going to do six, because he is not only weakened, he's also, we reduce his strength. So we nerf, like, this is the perfect elite for our deck to fight. And here we go. Beautiful. Now, I don't want to use Impervious right now, because he's intangible. I'm going to play this, and we will fully block. I could Berserk, but we'll take a bunch of damage if I do that, so... Uh, Berserk might have been a bad pickup. I don't know. Anyway, um, we'll fully block. I'm just going to do these two attacks. It'll pump up Rampage. And we'll pass. Now we're going to see if we can draw, like pick up Bludgeon or something and just put this guy away. Uh, we didn't pick up Bludgeon at all. We picked up a bunch of burns, which is... And no way to get rid of them in this current hand. Which is unfortunate, but... Um, it, it works out okay. Um, I'm going to actually body slam him first, just in case I want to return this. And uh, what I want to get back is Impervious. I feel like he's going to attack us next turn, so let's have that ready. This guy can do a big attack that's like a bajillion damage if he wants to. Um, but he's doing like smaller attacks. It might just be because we're at lower difficulty. Uh, and unfortunately, we drew Bludgeon when he is intangible, so we have to just deal with that. We shrug it off. Uh, I will Burning Pact this. He only takes one. You see he reduces everything. And he wants to do six to us, which, okay, fine. Uh, what I like to do is I'm going to play Armaments Plus, but I'm going to play Pommel Strike first so that I can draw some cards and see if we can get something to upgrade. Oh, actually, we drew Ghostly Armor, uh, so we're not going to play that. Uh, we're going to play this so we don't lose it. I'll slam him, even though it does one, and we take the burn damage and go. Now, this is the turn where I really like to kill this guy before things get too crazy. He wants to do nine, which, okay. Well, we're not drawing very well. But he'll be vulnerable for three turns at the very least. 
and we'll do that. And we'll take no damage. He's going to give us 4 plus 9, 13, so we'll be all right. We're going to have to kill him not the next turn, but the following turn. Like I said, this can be a, a tough fight to line things up. I would love some more card draw. Here's his big attack, right? So he wants to do a bajillion damage to us this turn. And unfortunately, we don't have the best way of getting dealing with that. So I'm going to get rid of Berserk and draw a couple cards. And there we go. This is exactly what we needed. How about that? That is why that's a good card. Impervious. Ghostly armor. We block exactly. Um... I'm going to Rampage. No, I can't do both. Uh, let's just headbutt them. What do we want back? What is going to be guaranteed good against this guy next turn? Uh, he'll be vulnerable. We can do damage. Gosh, I have to take a strike. It's so bad, but... Um, it's, it's going to be some guaranteed damage. All right, here we go. Perfect pommel strike. Yeah, we got him. Okay, so we'll just strike and ghostly armor and body slam. Finished. All right, cool. We did it. And ooh, we get war paint. So war paint um, is just going to upgrade two of our skills at random. Unfortunately, we have a bunch of basic defense, but we got purity and ghostly armor instead. Great. And what cards do we want? Well, well, well. How about this? Searing Blow is a great card to do damage, and you can upgrade it a bunch. So it's already been upgraded once, but you can keep upgrading it. So it's 2 energy for 16 damage, which is tremendous. Um, but I think I'm going to take Inflame. It's just a nice scale. It gives us 2 strength, so everything that we do that does damage just does a little bit more. And I'll take it. All right, and instead of a hallway fight, I'm going to cut over here and just keep milking our Juzu Bracelet forever. Uh, oh, this is unfortunate. So... When you fall, this event means you're going to lose something. And they're going to, like, sometimes it's damage, but generally it's three cards from your deck. Now, sometimes they can pick a card that's bad and you're happy about this, but other times not so much. In this case, um, I don't want to lose Metallicize Plus, and I actually like Headbutt and the versatility it gives me. So I'm going to just lose a Madness. I'm not too huge on that anyway. And we move on. And we take a chest. It's a big chest, and oh, we get 10 more max hit points from our pair. Whenever you gain max hit points in this game, you also heal that amount. So we were at 85 and 67, so we go up to 95, and then we gain that 10 hit points as well. So we're now doing just amazingly well, and we have to take this shot. We'll heal up to almost full, and we have a ton of money to spend at this dude. And let's see what we want, right? So we know that some of the things that we're looking for would be anything that's going to help us exhaust, okay? All right. Mm -hmm -hmm. So I'm looking around at what we've got. I don't want clothesline. Twin strike is fine, but I don't need it. I already have armaments. I already have a shockwave. I don't want two. Uh, fire breathing is interesting in specific circumstances, not really in ours. Impatience, it helps you draw attack cards, it helps you draw, which is actually not bad. Like, drawing is not bad. Um, but if you have an attack and you don't want to play it, um, then it becomes less good. Sadistic nature, whenever you apply a debuff to an enemy, they take 5 damage. Now, in terms of debuffs, we have weak vulnerable losing strength and we have uh one more vulnerable with our bash so we do have three things that are doing debuffs to them so that being said this is played once this is played once and we don't play bash all the time so given that i don't find this to be particularly valuable if we wanted to remove a card i would take out a basic strike and i will then it's time to see what else we want to spend money on. Nunchaku is just fine. It's it's an artifact where, or a relic, I'm sorry, where every time you play 10 attacks, you get an energy. So it's just like every once in a while gives you energy. Okay. Um, question card means that future card rewards have one additional card to choose from. So instead of seeing three cards every time we see a card, we'll see four. 
Now, we have to go to the map to make sure that's a good decision, right? So it's like, we could get one, two, three, right? So there's only going to be three times that we see cards, and I don't think I'm going to take this hallway fight. I think I'm going to go here, 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 um, and here. And then that would only be two cards. So it's only getting us two extra cards for uh, a huge amount of gold. So I'm not down with that. So what I'm going to do is buy Nunchaku. And I'm going to buy a Power Potion. And I'm going to buy an Attack Potion. I mean, why not? I already have a Smoke Bomb. don't need another one. And with these cards, is there anything that I want? If you look at the map, I might go to this shop, but probably not. I probably want to take on the Elite. So I'm going to take Impatience and just give myself a little bit of extra draw and then leave. And we're going to go here and see how it goes. All right, so we're fighting an Orb Walker. Orb Walker is a guy who, if you aren't scaling, this guy will destroy you. He is going to get three strength at the end of every turn. So because he's going to get stronger at the end of every turn, we need to go fast. I'm going to play Impatience first. Okay. Okay, so I need to do a little bit of dancing to get my hand set. So I'll Secret Weapon. I'm going to pick up Bludgeon. And I'm going to Shockwave right now. And then we're going to Offering. And... We can do 63 to this dude. Which seems pretty good. And then I could just do 12 more, but I can't finish him. So because of that, I'm just going to play... I could Armaments Plus. Um, I'm going to actually, instead of Ghostly Armor... I'm going to shrug it off and try to get a Body Slam plus. We didn't. So we take six damage more from that, and then we take no damage here, and we just need to find 16 damage. Really, eight, because he's vulnerable. And we did in spades. Impervious. All right. Easy peasy. And we got a Dex Potion. Uh, Dex Potion is terrific. I'm actually going to take it over this Attack Potion at this point. And then any cards that we want here, True Grit Plus would be cool. But I don't want it unupgraded. Do I want to take it? Actually, I could take it. Yeah, let's just take it. And then we'll go here. And we can just upgrade True Grit. And then now we get to pick what we just uh, we exhaust. So beautiful. Okay, and here we are on a different Act Three Elite, the Reptomancer. I mentioned her before. She is a particularly difficult fight because she spawns these daggers, and she does a ton of damage. And she makes more daggers, and they start doing a ton of damage. If you cannot kill the daggers you will struggle in this fight. And even if you can keep the daggers suppressed, she herself does a bunch of damage. So you need AoE, you need to burn the daggers down, and you need to kill her as fast as you can, uh, which is not unexpected. Most elites, you want to just put them in the ground quickly. But on this floor, the elites ask you to do different things, and they ask you, they demand it of you so strongly and so quickly that this is why I... Um, am sometimes terrified to face them. They can be run-ending if you're not prepared. So the elite that we fought before, the nemesis, what makes him hard is he puts burn cards in your deck, so you're on a clock. He does a bunch of damage. And if you don't get the cards that you need to do damage when he's not intangible, you're going to find yourself struggling. And so that fight is saying... Not only can you do damage, but can you cycle through or draw into your deck enough with consistency to find that damage? You could get lucky and just do it, but if you can't, 
you're in a world of hurt. So it's asking for a very specific thing. Can you can you synchronize your damage and blocks in the right time? This fight is asking for a lot of damage and for a lot of AoE. If you don't have enough, this can ruin you. You could be an otherwise strong enough deck to deal with most things, but this fight is just too much. And then the giant head is saying, I need you to scale up really, really quickly and kill me as fast as you can before I start hitting you for a truckload of damage that escalates every single turn. Um, so if you are a more slow and methodical deck that eventually, you know, overwhelms enemies with attrition, that doesn't work on a giant head. He has too many hit points. He hits too hard. So let's see if we can handle the Reptomancer right here with uh, some AoE, sort of, but really our deck doesn't shine at that. We're going to need to just do big hits on these knives. So we have a lot of potions uh, to use, and of course if it goes badly we can always smoke bomb. But let's offering right now. Okay, here we are. Full hand. Now, I'm going to want to look around at my other possibilities. I want to play Metallicize. There's pretty much no question of that. Now, from here, uh, we probably want to dig out something to the effect of either a Bludgeon or a Shield Bash. Let's see, I have um, nine cards in my hand. If I play Pommel Strike, I'll go down to eight and draw two. Okay, I think I can do that. Let's hit the weaker dagger. And we got our bludgeon. So like I said, what we're really trying to do here is just annihilate daggers. So I think what I'll do is I'll... Um, oh, right. Uh, hmm. If I simply... You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to secret weapon. And I'm going to pick up a body slam plus. Then... I'm going to... Uh, just play madness and see what it hits. Oh, we got lucky. <laughs> and it hits bludgeon. I was only doing that so that I could get the exhaust. Uh, impatience is not going to work for us. But here's my plan. Um, I'm going to disarm the Reptomancer, and then this will kill that dagger with the exhaust. And then... I'm going to ghostly armor myself so it, we don't lose it. And then I'll just body slam this dagger... And I will bludgeon the Reptomancer. And I could headbutt and bring back my bludgeon. I'm, I think I'm actually going to do that. I was, I think I thought about metallicizing right there, but... Let's just make sure we have a bludgeon. Again, I have potions. I'm going to try to save them. Let's pass. Alright, she'll make another knife right now. And instead of making a knife, she wants to attack us. But we got Bludgeon back, and Madness, <laughs> we just got really lucky. I mean, this is a very hard fight, but because Madness' effect is permanent, we're in this spot where we have a free Bludgeon forever. So that's very, very strong, right? So we're going to shrug it off, get some armor. Uh, Shockwave Plus is tremendous. Um, I know this is kind of cheese ball, but it uses a potion, but let's just win this fight. I'm just going to duplicate Bludgeon, and you'll see that it does 63 twice because she's vulnerable from Shockwave, and that's just going to kill her. And when she dies, the dagger dies. So we're going to drink Duplication Potion and then use this. One, two, she's gone. The dagger will go with her. 
and there we are. All right, we got 25 gold. We also got a red skull. Red skull is a tremendous relic. Um, we're not going to get its effect too much unless we're in a bad situation, but if you are in a bad situation, you'll need this, and it will help. And we got a potion to fill the spot, which is a flex potion. And we have some very, very good choices here. Uh, let me see. Okay, so we're fighting the woke bloke. So I'm actually going to take cleave. Um, I don't have any strict AoE, and the woke bloke uh, has some buddies with him. So let's get some AoE for that fight. I'm going to go over here to the event. I'm going to skip the hallway fight. And oh god, we got a shop just in case, right? And so we can heal up and see if there's anything that we want. Is that another entropic brew? I don't think there's anything more embarrassing that we can do. Um, look at where we are on the map. Smoke post, uh, smoke bomb can no longer be used. So I'm going to actually right... Uh, I'm going to left-click on it, sorry, and then discard this potion and then buy another entropic brew. It, it will block one slot, the first usage, but we're going to get so much value out of this that it's going to be disgusting, all right? Um, it, I did that really quickly but before looking at what I could buy. I couldn't buy any of these relics. I couldn't buy feed, and feed is not going to really help us anymore. It's too late for it to work anyway. You want to get feed early so it you can use it a bunch and raise your if, hit points. Um, I could have got trip, you know, but I have shockwave plus, and none of the other cards uh, were incredibly nuts to me. And the other potions weren't as good as the entropic brew. I just immediately saw that and was like, oh my god, that's so many potions. So we're going to go here, we'll rest up again, and then we're going to smith and what do we want to boost, right? I think I'm going to boost Berserk uh, so I can actually try to use this. Now, this will make the this guy stronger, uh, which is unfortunate. But my idea here is for one turn of pain for being vulnerable and for strengthening uh, the Woke Bloke, it'll be worth the extra energy, I think. I'll show you. So here we go. This fight is like this. This is the Awakened One. He's just kind of jokingly called the Woke Bloke. Uh, and what he does is he starts with two cultists. You guys have seen these before at the Act 1. And they are buffing themselves and they're going to get that buff to make their strength go up. So they need to die immediately. Now the Woke Bloke has this ability called um, Curiosity, which means if you play a power card, it gets one strength and it regenerates 10 hit points a turn and it's unawakened and what that means is if you once you do all 300 damage to it it will change forms into something else so don't think you you kill it when you do 300 there's another form behind it now this fight is one where you can't play ex superfluous powers because it, the awakened one will just do too much damage to you the awakened one already wants to do 20. But powers that you can play that are strong enough to compensate for one strength gain are worth it. So like, you know, defragment on the, the defect or here are our, our strength in flame ability, uh, things like that. They're still worth playing and berserk as well. You just can't go crazy. Metallicize Plus, by the way, 100% worth playing, even though it makes them stronger, because four armor counterbalances the one strength, for the most part. Now, we get to do some really fun stuff here, but before we do that, let's just have, let's have a blast. We're playing on that, um, like Ascension Zero. This is our first play of the game with this character, so there, there's no more to do beyond this. We're not going to Act 4, which we'll talk about per perhaps in a later tutorial. It's not even a possibility for us um, until we beat it. And we're not on Ascension 20, so there's not two boss fights in a row. There's just one. So given that information, we can use all of the potions we have uh, knowing that there's no other fight after this for us to even bother with. So I'm going to drink my Dexterity Potion immediately. I'm going to drink my Power Potion immediately. And we get a choice. What do we want to do? Okay. These are free powers. So all of these... Um, brutality is okay, but we're not going to take that right here. It's either Demon Form or Juggernaut. I feel like... The 
demon form is slow as bananas. But this is a long fight, so it's going to become insane. This is good. Does five damage. Random enemy. Eh. Let's get let's get nuts. Let's become a demon. So this is going to give us two strength every turn. It's just like their ability, basically, except demons. So we play this, and you'll notice now the Awakened One is doing 21. All right? So we have to deal with that. I play this. Now the Awakened One is doing 22. All right? But I'm going to disarm the Awakened One <laughs> right away. And we're going to offer him. Let's see what we get. Okay. So it happened right away, and it's better now than next turn. So we're going to go ahead and Berserk. We'll be vulnerable this turn, so we're going to take a ton of damage. But we're going to Shockwave Plus. And now we're only taking 22. As far as armor goes... We didn't really draw the best armor that we could. But... We're not done. I think I might Burning Pact my Purity Plus. Because I don't know how many cards I'm really, really trying to get rid of right now. I don't want a Burning Pact actually anything else in my hand except maybe Headbutt. Alright, I'm gonna... This isn't the best hand to do this because I don't have that many attack cards. But I am going to drink my Flex Potion so that I can start Entropic Brew. And I will... Well, no. Let's do Entropic Brew right now. All right. Terrific. So I got a Gambler's Brew, which is interesting. Um, I got a Duplicate Potion. And an Attack Potion. Okay. And another Power Potion. Let's use the Attack Potion. Wow. Wow. Alright, so I have plus 5 strength right now. So this will do 13 to everyone. Um, so, and they're vulnerable. This is more centralized damage, right? This is going to do, um, you know, 20 plus my strength plus the vulnerable. It's going to one-shot one of the... the uh, cultists. But this is just an absurd amount of damage to all of them, right? So that was like 60 damage. Okay. Now, I could have duplicated that, I suppose, if I wanted to. I'm going to play Ghostly Armor to get myself some protection. Let's see what power we can get. Uh, I'm going to take another demon form. <laughs> Uh, we're going to take a bunch of damage this turn, but we're gaining now four strength a turn. This this fight is nearly over. Now, we can Rampage and... Uh, yeah. Here's what I'll do. Ooh, there's so many things to consider. I only have one energy. I'm being very, very wasteful right here. I'm going to drink duplication and just hit this guy twice. Now, the reason I'm doing that is um, my rampage, you'll see, got pumped up. And now it's going to be strong for the rest of the fight. Oh, I should have been paying attention. I got an extra energy from Nunchaku right there, which is insane. So now I can um, headbutt <laughs> right here and just kill this dude. And pick up my Rampage again. And we're going to take 10, but be happy. I'm not going to purity my Burning Pack because I want to be able to draw cards later. Um... I could just purity itself, but I'll keep it. All right, so with our Vitalicize, we take six. And now, uh, this fight is pretty much over because we're just too strong. You'll see this is why you don't want Strength on the Awakened One, because he does these multi-attacks, which 
benefit so tremendously from strength, but our amazing disarm has really muted this guy's power. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do right here is I will secret weapon and just get myself a uh, body slam plus and then I'm going to gambler's brew just this defend right here uh, because I want to use it. All right, so here's our here's our line now. We have five energy. Uh, we can't play everything, unfortunately. I'm going to inflame impervious rampage body slam. We will take no damage. Might as well give ourselves more strength because, yeah, that's what we need. Impervious. Rampage does 45. Body slam does 58. And we'll take no damage. Now, I will say, as a strategy thing against the Awakened One, you can just wait until the next form and not play any powers. And then when it goes to the next form, it no longer gets this curiosity buff. So you don't make it stronger with powers. And that's definitely something you can do. But because demon form is going to be scaling up, and I wanted the extra energy and things, I made the decision I'm going to play the powers now, even though I know it's getting strength, because I feel like I can handle it, and it will make me stronger and, and win faster overall. So that's just kind of what I did. I'm going to drink this and see what potions we get. All right. Energy potion is kind of what I was looking for here. Do I want to... I don't really need to bash him. I mean, I can. Uh, unfortunately, another thing is when he changes forms, he's going to lose the disarm. So you could also think about saving disarm for the next form, but I wanted to do it now so I could just get really, really strong. And let's just end the turn. This is fine. I'm going to save my energy potion and stuff for, like, a turn when I feel like I might take a bunch of damage. So let's um, look at our hand. And uh, I'm going to Pommel Strike first. So when you have cards that draw, you want to play those early before you spend your energy. All right, terrific. This is actually really, really good. So we're going to True Grit Plus right here. And we're going to get rid of this basic defend. Uh, we don't want to draw that anymore. Um, I am going to just Madness one of these cards because now I can use my Impatience. We can just do this. We can do this. And we can try to find something. Uh, there we go. How about that? And we can use this and fully block. Okay. There's no reason not to drink Essence of Steel right now. That just gives us plated armor. So now with our Metallicize... Uh, and everything, we're just rolling. Oh god, what a good draw. Look at this. Armaments plus. Upgrade everything. Metallicize plus. Did I make you stronger? I don't care. Um, now, on harder difficulties, you might need to make different decisions, but even then, Metallicize plus against this guy is pretty much always worth doing. Um... I could have a really funny turn here where if I speed potion, I should have done that at the beginning if I was going to do that, but I would get five extra armor on both of these and then body slam for just an ungodly amount. I'm actually going to do it. All right, there we go. There we go. And this is 81 damage with our body slam. So he's going to die next turn. And look at our strength. It's 14. And now it goes up to 18. How about that? Now, he wants to do 17, but he's not going to live long enough to do it. Any extra damage you do will not have any effect right now. So let's just um, Pommel Strike. It doesn't carry over, okay? So I can Ghostly Armor so I don't lose this. And we'll just set up for the next turn. There's really nothing I want to do. I don't want to purity my impatience. I want all of these cards, so I'm just going to end the turn. And now he changes forms. 
so once you get him down to zero he has to take a turn to change forms all these spikes come out he gets a strength boost of three and look he's doing 43 damage i mean that's a ton of damage this guy wants to hit us extremely hard and there's very little we can do about it we're just going to take damage now in this spot if you want okay to not exhaust something with true grit it's just a strategic thing where and you generally do this with regular true grit or if you're in a situation where you don't want to exhaust anything and i like keeping a, a zero damage strike that does 31 i want to keep that you just play true grit last and then there's nothing to exhaust this is a mandatory exhaust we have five energy thanks to our berserk so we'll start out here oh he lost his vulnerable by the way uh because um he changed forms so we'll do this and then we got nunchaku anyway so there we go oh i should have upgraded that with with armaments plus that's a that's a disastrous mistake on my part i would have given me an extra turn of vulnerability anyway we'll play armaments plus we'll play ghostly armor we'll play strike and we'll do 46 to his face and then true grit and we are going to block for full because of our metallicize and because of our steel plating. All right. And he still regenerates. Now he's going to do like some fancy 13 times three. And this is where like, look at this. He's hitting really, really hard. And um, the strength that I gave him in the first form, it does carry over into the second form and makes this even harder too. So it's another reason to perhaps lay off on the powers, but it's a decision where you can't not play powers and make your deck not powerful, you know, because you're afraid. Like, I've died on this fight before because I don't play powers because I'm scared of playing them, but then I don't scale up enough to even win anyway. And Demon Form, we have 26 bonus strength. I mean, we're just falling out of bed. I body slam with no block for 26. That's how good this is so um might as well throw my fire potion it does 20 no matter what there you go and let's shrug it off all right so this is going to be a really fun turn of doing a bajillion damage we'll defend we'll defend plus we'll defend and now he's trying to do 39 we already block for all of that right we'll headbutt him and what card do we want back bludgeon and I'm going to use my Explosive Potion, do 10 damage to him, and then we're doing 100 with our Body Slam. So we're guaranteed to win next turn. Because we know that we draw Bludgeon, and he doesn't have the health. Oh, he's not vulnerable anymore. Oh, wait a minute. It doesn't matter. It does 72 just naturally. Um, I'm going to troll this guy just a little bit. I'm going to Burning Pact um, my Impatience. All right, that didn't give me the best stuff. That's fine. We're going to Rampage. Oh, I can't play. Here we go. I want to just do as much damage as I can to the guy. I'll Cleave. And then I will... True Grip plus my defense. And he's at 18. And we'll drink our energy potion and bludgeon him. Checkmate. So there we go. Now that's the power of Demon Form. But I will tell you that Demon Form is a beautiful power for the Act 3 boss fight, for for zero energy. But normally, it's too expensive and too slow to be worth its, its while, in my opinion. Um, there are some fights where it lasts long enough to scale up, but most fights are over too fast to justify spending three energy and doing nothing on a turn uh, to, you know, have a few extra strength. But in that fight that lasts forever, we got it, we got two, and we got it up to 30, so it's great. And we just got very lucky with our power potions that that was a choice. Proceed. Now, this is the heart. 
So you get to the heart of the spire when you win, and it's going to give you a score. So we say continue, and we just attack this thing. And we, for how much damage we do, it gives us a relative score, and you'll see. So we got 851 as our score, um, and uh, our, our character has done 76,000 damage to the heart, but everybody else has done, you know, an insane 14 billion damage uh, to the heart. So now we sleep, and we'll see. We, we won, and we push continue. But wait a minute. We won victory. We died. Yes, indeed, we died. We did not win. That is Slay the Spire. We're back in the Spire. There's no escape. Continue. Now, when you win, a few things happen. All right? So we unlocked Ascension Mode, and we um, boosted up the experience of the Ironclad by 551 to almost get to a point where we can unlock some new cards and relics and things. Uh, and that's where we're at. You saw the Ascension was unlocked, and this is how you get your score. It tells you, like, what we got points from, you know, uh, where we we did good things and, and the like. And we'll say unlock. And, oh, we did level up. Okay. So now, in the future, if we play Ironclad, we'll see Limit Break, which is disgusting, Spot Weakness, which can be very good, and Heavy Blade, which is usually a trap but can be okay depending on strength but is not as formidable as it might seem okay great proceed and look at this we unlocked a new character the silent fantastic so now when we play again we can play as either the ironclad or the silent who is she's more of a rogue type character she poisons she flips she dodges she throws um shurikens and kunai and uh, shivs and all manner of things at her enemies small daggers and blades so she's a really cool uh, character as well and totally different playstyle. all right so how about that well everyone i hope that you found this complete beginner's guide useful it's a look at a ironclad run from the very beginning with the starting card pool all the way through Act 1, beating the boss. I tried to describe all of my decision-making for what cards I chose, what relics I chose, what path I took, the strategies for each fight, and give you just uh, a very, very comprehensive look at the game from this point. I hope that it was useful to you. Uh, I might do one for the Silent and the Defect and the Watcher, if you guys are interested, but uh, I'm not sure how much demand that would be for that. But if you want to see that, please let me know in the comments below uh, and ask me any questions you have about the game in the comments, and I would love to help you out. I hope that this gets you playing Slate Aspire because it is a game that I return to again and again. It's always fresh. It's so well balanced. It's an amazing challenge, especially on harder difficulty levels. Wait a minute. What is this? There's still more. We see a key. It has three parts. It has the ironclad, the silent, and the defect. And so what this means is that we cannot fight the heart until we have beaten the game with all of those. And then we'll be able to have the opportunity to go for Act 4, I believe. There might be more requirements than that. I am, I'm not 100% sure. That's how it used to be, uh, I think. But it's been a while since I've done that. All right, everybody. Take care.